to the sea back again uh, with another movie review this time we are talking venom let there be carnage now i know this is a little late i should have got this out to y'all i don't know like a week ago and normally if i had waited this long i normally would not even put the video out however i really want to talk about venom so we're going to talk about venom because well i'm the one doing the videos and i want to talk about it so that's what we're going to do Anyway, make sure you are following me on all social media at The Grind Calls. Uh, that's TikTok, that's Instagram, that's Twitter. On the TikTok, you can get spoiler-free reviews of movies. So normally, a lot sooner, like fresh out the theater. Uh, the new No Time to Die review is already up, so go check that out. Go check out the Instagrams, go check out the Twitters. And don't forget to go to thegrindcalls.com, where you can get all your pop culture positivity news it is going down over there, but we're going to talk Venom because whew, I loved this movie. I really did. Um, and, you know, full disclosure, I loved the first one, too. I will tell you uh, that I went into the first one thinking I was going to hate it because I'm sitting back going, how do you make a Venom movie without Spider-Man? That's so dumb. That's like making a Joker movie without Batman. It worked on both accounts. I mean, if you ask my friend uh, Jader the Hurricane, uh, it did not work on both accounts because he thinks the first movie is trash and he thinks this movie is, and I quote, garbage, just like the first one. What Jader doesn't seem to understand, and I love Jay. I love Jay. He is my brother. He has been through my, by my side through everything I've been through. So I love you, Jay, but you're wrong. And, and film is subjective. That's the best thing about film. Sometimes people like film. Some people don't like film. But film is subjective. Uh, however, your opinion is what is garbage. Because Venom is just a fun... They're fun movies. That's what they are. They're go to the movie, have some popcorn, turn your brain off for an hour and a half, and have fun. Now, if this movie was like two hours, two and a half hours long, that would probably be a problem with it. But it's only an hour and a half. It is a, it's a nice, fun little getaway from everything and enjoy a little bit of comic book movie fun. And that's what I love about this. Uh, because, and then just so you guys know, for the rest, there are going to be spoilers in this. So if you have not seen Let There Be Carnage, uh, you, need a, you need to go back. Now, the only thing that's really going to be spoiled is the post credit scene. That's, that's, the, that's the big thing that you don't want to know about. But most of you already know about because there's a bunch of assholes on the internet that want to tell you about what's going on. They want to they spoil the fun for everybody. So they already put it out there so you guys had to see it. And, and, and I just, I feel terrible. I feel awful. for the, Why people got to do that, I don't know. But I digress. So... Venom 2 continues to follow the story of Venom. Um, we're still doing the odd couple here. They're not getting along. They're bickering a lot. Uh, Eddie's having to revamp his career while uh, interviewing Cletus Cassidy. Uh, he pisses off Cassidy. Cassidy bites him and boom! He's got part of the, part of the, uh, the symbiote. Now, things I did not like about this movie. Um, Carnage was cool. Carnage was badass. Would it have been cool to see a rated R uh, Carnage where he's out there murdering everybody and we got blood and, they're, and Venom's actually biting people's heads off, not off-screen violence? Yes, that would have been cool. But they're still big, giant monster symbiotes, and it's a lot of fun to see these guys fight. But Carnage, there's not the... They didn't do the character justice. Like, he looks really cool, and he's vicious, and he's a monster, and he's violent, but he, I remember Carnage, to me, Carnage had a very high-pitched voice. 
Um, maybe that's the cartoon talking to me or something. I would have loved a more higher pitched voice. And the thing about Carnage was Cletus and Carnage bonded perfectly and they weren't two separate entities. They were one. Uh, they were I. Carnage said I, Venom said we. That was always the big thing. And they do a good job at showing you that Venom and Eddie are separated, but they are Venom together. So, you know, they, they do a good job with that characteristic of him. But Carnage, on the other hand, Carnage and Cletus are bickering throughout the film, too. And I don't like that. Uh, because Cletus had one love, not Shriek. He loved Carnage. So that's the kind of thing I kind of was disappointed in. Um, other than that, I really had fun with this whole movie. Uh, I thought Shriek was really good. Um, was the story perfect? No, there's some, there's some up and downs. This is definitely not going to win any Oscars or anything. But I did really love, uh, you know, Venom's now having to go up against Shriek. The sound aspect of that really added something cool into this. And um, Naomi Harris was fantastic in the role. Um, Tom Hardy, once again, incredible. A lot of people are saying that... Uh, that that your boy Woody Harrelson shouldn't have been Carnage. But like my boy over on Instagram, uh, Giggles, a.k.a. Uh, you can follow him at my underscore nightmare 420. He said uh, it was a pretty it was pretty good. Nice storyline. Funny parts. Woody did great as a crazy person. And I will say that I completely agree that Woody Harrelson was fantastic as Cletus, the crazy ass uh Psycho Killer. That was perfect. I love that. I just wish they would have got the symbiote part a little bit better. Um, so, okay. Another thing people are having issues with is the rave. Now, there's a scene, that, there's a moment of the story that, you know, gets very superhero cliche where in the second one, superheroes got to lose his powers or, you know, whatever. And Venom and Eddie separate. And Venom just goes from person to person at a rave. Uh, <laughs> and yes, it's just as stupid as it sounds. However, uh, Mr. Hero Venom is definitely just murking all these bodies that he's bonding with and then leaving. Because no one else can survive other than Eddie. So he kind of just like kills seven people. <laughs> and no one has talked about that. They're just like, yeah, he was at a rave. Yeah, he's at a rave, and he gives this weird speech in front of it, and everyone's like, how do you not know it's a monster? <sighs> Look, man, I've been to Comic-Con, all right? I've seen, I seen some crazy cosplay, so who am I to judge what you believe and what you don't? Now, Venom at the Rave, I think the scene was a good idea. I think it could have worked. I just don't think they executed it well. Venom's speech that he gives on uh, in, in front of the whole party doesn't really make sense. Uh, and maybe that was the point. They're going for an awkwardness of him. But at the same time, like, I feel you could have done this better. And it, there, there's a way to make this work. And Andy Serkis didn't find that. And, you know, Andy's taking over the directing duties here. He hasn't directed a lot of movies. Um, I know I was not a fan of his Mowgli, uh, his version of The Jungle Book. Um, but I think he did a decent enough job with this movie. But I, I think he still needs a little bit of work. Uh, and, and, and that rave scene is something that shows you that, that he, can st that he still has room to grow as a director. So um, at the end, you know, I love the final battle. Some of the battles were a little too close up camera view. And again, that comes with the directing and whatnot. Um, but the fight was awesome. You know, there's, there, there's good moments in there. And then we have a great... Uh, you know, they save their f bomb. They do. They did a good job. They did the PG thirteen thing where, where Woody, they we're trying to make Woody uh, Cletus a uh, sympathetic villain. He's like, I just wanted to be friends and blah 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 blah. And Venom just fuck this guy. <laughs> I loved that so much. I lost my shit. Uh, and and bites his head right off. Um, so and 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 sitting at that moment, I'm thinking, oh. We just we just killed Carnage. That's it. No more Carnage. Like it was that easy to defeat Carnage. But then, 
we get the post credit scene, which is what you got, what, what you're here for. You're here to talk post credit scene. And um, so here's the thing. We're, we're sitting, Venom and, and Eddie are on vacation. They're somewhere in some bum fucking broke down beach house somewhere. And Venom's telling Eddie about how he knows so much of the cosmic universe. And Eddie's like, you know, let me see. He's like, all right, I'll let you see, but just a little. And then, boom, this big old flash of light hits. And suddenly they're in a new place. Um, it's a very nice uh, beach house. And they're trying to look around, trying to figure out where they are. And Venom's like, this isn't me. I didn't even show you yet. I don't, I don't know what's going on now. And in the background on the TV, you see... J.K. Simmons's J. Jonah Jameson talking about Spider-Man. Now, right before this movie, I watched. I rewatched all the Spider-Man. I watched uh, the the Raimi trilogy, the Garfield uh, films, and I didn't think I was going to because I was like, "Well, there's a possibility we see maybe Andrew Garfield or Tobey Maguire," um, because if we're gonna see a Spider-Man that would be the possibility. So I watched those movies leading up. And because I had some extra time, I was like, you know what? Let's 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 rewatch Homecoming and Far From Home as well. Never in my wildest dreams did I think they would do that much of an MCU crossover with Venom. Um, I, I thought that was not possible. But boom, there's Tom Holland on the screen. Venom immediately falling in love with little Tom Holland. Creepy, because Tom Holland is a, is a high school student. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, wow, Venom has now crossed over into the MCU, and there's so much potential here. Now, everyone's just thinking, oh, that's cool, we're going to see Tom Hardy in the MCU as Venom, but think about the other aspects of this. Is he going to be in No Way Home? We don't know, but he could be. That's a very big possibility. Um, he could be in Doctor Strange. He could be in... I uh, won't be in Eternals, but he could be in either one of those. Plus, Carnage isn't dead anymore. We're in a new universe. Somewhere out there, there is another Cletus Cassidy in this universe. What's this universe's Cletus like? Somewhere out there, there's another Shriek. She's now in this universe as well. Um, and that's what's really interesting. But it looks like Eddie himself may have been the only one to cross over. So what does that mean for Anne? What does that mean for his Anne? His, there, there, there's definitely an Anne in the MCU probably, but it's not his Anne. She's probably had different experiences. And what does that say about the Eddie Brock that is in this uni universe? There's got to be an Eddie in this universe. So are there now two Eddies? What's going on with it? There's so much potential. There's so much that you want to see. Um, I am hoping that he is in No Way Home, but I'm hoping that it is a post-credit No Way Home. I hope in No Way Home everything comes to an end. We, we, we settle everything. And then in a post-credit scene, you find out that Eddie didn't go back to his universe. Eddie is here in this universe. And he's not happy. That's a way you can now make him hate Peter Parker because he's blaming Peter Parker for him not being able to be in his uni universe with his Anne. And then Venom can then find a way to hate Peter Parker because Peter uh, Spider-Man re rejects him. So then you have that actual Spider-Man Spider Venom relationship going on going forward and I could not be more excited about this. I'm all in on Tom Hardy's Venom being in the MCU. I'm all in on everything they have going forward. This is awesome. I'm excited. And I'm wondering if that's going to put you know the MCU in charge of Venom 3? Because you know there's going to be Venom 3. They made $90 million opening weekend. And at this point, it's made another $32 million the second weekend, coming in behind uh, No Time to Die. And uh, at, at, as, of, as of the 10th, $185 million uh, in the worldwide box office, which is massive for the pandemic. Um, it broke the, with with its ninety three opening. It broke the uh, pandemic's 
record for the highest opening since uh, before the before the pandemic. It also broke the October record and its own re its original Venom release. It broke its record. So you know there's going to be more of these. I'm excited to see what happens. Uh, but what about you guys? I, I got to tell you, did you like Venom? Because for me, when I'm ranking Venom, this movie is so dope. Remember, if you want to know uh, how the ranking systems work for the uh, for the channel, there is a ranking video pinned to the top of the page. So go and check that out. There's also a link in the description down below. So, what about you? What did you guys think? Answer the call. Comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on Venom. Uh, let there be carnage. What do you think going forward we're going to see uh, from Tom Hardy and the MCU? Uh, let me know, guys. Holla at me down below. Uh, don't forget to follow us on all social media at The Grind Calls. T-H-E-G-R-I-N-D-C-A-L-L-S. That is not as easy to say as, as the old name was. I, was, I had a real good cadence with the old one. Uh, I got to get a cadence for this one. That one sounds easy. But at The Grind Calls, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, thegrindcalls.com for all your pop culture positivity. We're, we're bringing you the news and we're celebrating the things we love. Comment. Let me know. Subscribe. Hit the bell. All those things. Until next time, guys. Answer the call.